This is Princeton Tonight. Featuring Billy Joel band member and singer-songwriter Mike Del Judas. These are good things with Princeton's own Paul Shorin. And your host, Jordan Salama. Welcome to Princeton Tonight, everybody. I'm Jordan Salama, and we have such an exciting show for you today. Our guest has an unbelievable story. He's done so many different things, from writing his own music to starting a hit tribute band, and now he tours with Billy Joel himself. Here to talk about his unique career is the very talented Mike Del Duce. Mike. Mike, thank you so much for being on the show. It's so great to have you. Um, you're an all-around amazingly talented musician. I'd like Thank to start you. about your beginnings. You're self-taught, which I just think is unbelievable. Uh, can you please talk about that? How did you get started in music? Uh, I got started, I, I was basically heavily influenced by music from my father and my brothers. They both, you know, everybody listened to different uh, kinds of music in the house. My brother was the rock guy. My father was more of the Elton John, Billy Joel guy. So I got to grow up listening to a lot of great stuff. So I always kind of had a love for music. And you took lessons, but you found <coughs> out that that wasn't exactly your thing, so you kind of like took your own path to learning this. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to get right to learning songs. I was on the guitar, so I heard Smoke on the Water, and I was like, I want to play that, you know? You the know. songs you hear on the radio. I just, yeah, whatever, wanna... yeah, whatever I liked, I really wanted to play. Right. And they, he's, and he's the guy sitting there teaching me, and every good boy yeah. does fine, and all this stuff, and <laughs> reading notes, and I'm like, ah, and That's not what you want to do. No. Nah, so no, at what so. point then did you start playing Billy Joel music? That probably started in high school. I uh, used to just sit in the music room and uh, in between classes or even during classes that mm. I should have been in so that I was <laughs> in the music room practicing. But, um, and I would just sit there and kind of just play and learn stuff and I used to start singing Billy stuff and then a couple people would walk down the hallway and they'd be like, you sound like Billy a little <laughs> bit, you know, and this, this was like a long time, I was, in, I was young. Right. But uh, I, I knew then it was Elton and it was Billy, it was those kind of guys on the piano anyway that I wanted to, they wanted to be like McCartney too, another one. Yeah. You know, so. so this is how it this kind is, of started. Yeah. And then I'm curious as to, you know, at what point does this turn into the desire to create an entire tribute band around an artist? You know, some people like to play the songs, but then it's a whole different level when you create Big Shot, which was your Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, so much happened between, you know, high school and Big Shot. There, yeah. was, there was just so many ups and downs. Uh, I was usually trying to get my own music out. Mm -hmm. And then in the process of doing so, I also needed to make a living. So right out of high school, I started learning the piano. And uh, I picked up a piano bar gig at a, at a place called Port Wind Restaurant in Port Jeff. And that was my first real gig. And I was actually still in high school when I did that. And once I realized I could make, I was making a problem back then, it was $150 a night. Wow. So, you know. That's not a bad living for no. a high schooler, playing what, no. what he wants to play. That's it great. Was, it was great. So right. I knew. So yeah. let's talk about then Big Shot. Now, because the band's rise has been phenomenal. I know it's been around for uh, quite a, a while at this yeah, point. 16 years. Now. 16 years of Big Shot. And yeah. you've developed kind of like a cult following in Long Island, I have to say. Like, there are just people who are enormous fans of everything that you do. These places just get filled with fans that want to come and see Big Shot. And it must be an amazing feeling for you. Yeah, it's great. I mean, listen, I, you know, whenever it could be worse, people cannot want to see me. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> not want to, you know, even come down. And the band is always great. We, I always have a great bunch of musicians, too. So I credit a lot to them. You know, I'm surrounded by really talented, really talented people. people. So, and the musicians in Big Shot were kind of how you got your big break with this special story about Billy Joel. Yeah. Can you please talk about how that happened? That yeah, I made I made a move in my band, and um, Tommy came in. Tommy Burns, the guitar player for Billy Joel for 25 years, and when Tommy came in, we became really really tight. Mm -hmm. So we became good friends. So just having him around, Chuck Berge came in, and that's Billy's drummer. They were all around. Everybody was kind of you know intermix intermix between was, Billy Joel's yeah, band and Big yeah. Shot. There were certain nights we we did corporate corporate events out in Palm Springs where uh, Billy's whole band was was there and I and, and I just said yeah yeah so right. the more we developed that kind of relationship Billy decided he was going to go out on and do this Europe run this mm -hmm. run in Europe <clears throat> earlier that morning I got a phone call from Tommy and he said you know, he asked me like do you have a passport and I was like why are they mm. asking me if I have a passport you know so started to get a little excited but I thought maybe they were going to take me on the road to just do the sound checks mm -hmm. and, to, and still that would have been a lot of right. fun so uh I'm like, yeah, and then all of a sudden, before you know it, you know, you know the stuff on guitar. Uh-oh. Uh, and I was like, yeah. 
Well, I got a guitar in my hand. I'm in the back room. I'm working on some songs. Like frantically, like, I, oh, my yeah, God. Oh and my I know God. he's showing yeah. up in like 20. Well, Billy, yeah. Billy's going to be here in 20 minutes. So here, here's his guitar, yeah. and, you know. <laughs> now I'm transposing in my mind from the piano to the guitar chords, and you know, and I'm like, all right, I could, I could do this. Like I just said yes immediately. I didn't want to, you know, act right. like I didn't. No, even if I did, of course, you know, fake it till you make it kind of deal. Mm -hmm. And I guess it was already in the cards. It was yeah. already he was. It was already planned out, but I didn't know it. Yeah. They were like tricking me. Yeah, they were all on. tricking me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they were. They had already at that point had my passport. Had my everything was already being, my work visa. My everything was like done already. <laughs> right. So, he's like, I got to talk to Mike. I got to talk to Mike. So I, I, I walk over on the side with him, and a couple other people walked over to talk with us also. And he's like, No, 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 no. I just no. let me talk to Mike alone. And I was like, Oh God. You know. Had you not met him before? I met him. Not under, I met him under different circumstances. Okay. He invited us to do sound check at the Coliseum with Big Shot in mm. 2002. I was just messing around playing my life on, you know, on the piano and he just comes walking up behind me. I didn't even see him coming, you know, taps me on the shoulder and he's like, you know, hey Mike. And I was like, <laughs> so that was, that, was, <laughs> that was the first time. And then, and then fast forward, it's 10 right. years later. And, he, and, you know, you and, get that and then he asks me to, you know, you want to go to Europe? Like, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I said something else, and I can't, you know, but yeah, <laughs> you can't repeat can't it, on, repeat this it on this show. No. Right. And now here you are. Yeah, so you're touring. Yeah. You have, but you also have your own music, and I think yeah. it's really important that we want to talk about that. Uh, yeah. You know, switch gears. Talk about your solo career. You okay. are finding a balance, right, where you can tour with Billy Joel and write your own stuff, and it's important to talk about that. Is that easy for you? Uh, it's, yeah. It's. I mean, it's easy to write. It's just never easy to complete a project. It's you know, originally wise because the cover thing does take up, and doing the Billy thing takes up a lot of time. But that's my living. Mm. Uh, the original thing is always. Um, it's always a, a passion, and it's always a uh, something that I want to do. I, you always want to be your own artist. You yeah. have albums out, and yes. it doesn't like. Does it get better than this? I don't understand. Like you have albums. You're with Billy Joel. You're opening up for Nassau Coliseum. Uh, you have My Street and Miller Place, these two albums right here. Um, and can you talk about them? Yeah, Miller Place, Miller Place is a, is, was my first CD that I put out. It's a, basically a collection of a lot of um, demos that I had recorded. It's basically like a, almost like a basement kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Different studios, different, uh, there's a couple really good studio recordings, a couple ones are from my house. Um, but all the earliest stuff that I'd written, I wrote a chunk of the material that's on both of these records back in probably 2000. 2001, I had a really productive year that year, and I, all I did was write. I filled up tape recordings of just yeah. hundreds of songs. And you finally got to make and them. And finally got to make them. I got yeah. So Mill Places first. My Street was recorded in 2011, so I did that recently. did that yeah. at uh, Cove City. This is uh, Richie Kanata's studio, Richie's, uh, Billy's first uh, sax player, his original sax player. Richie He's got a Kanata. studio in Glen Cove. Yeah. And yeah, real, really, great. really proud of both of them. All right, well, this is super exciting. It sounds like you're truly living the dream. Uh, you Absolutely. have a lot of exciting plans for the future. I'm sure you're going to come out with new songs. Yes, yes. Yeah, another EP on the way. Another so, EP on yeah, the way. What's yeah. it called? Do you know? Don't know yet. Don't know uh, yet. But uh, look out for it. Yeah, yeah look, look out, out for it. For it. Absolutely. Okay. So this is super exciting. Everybody on our show knows how talented you are. We're so happy to have you. So thank you so much for thank coming Thank you very again, much. Mike. I appreciate it. Really, Thanks really, really great to have you. Thanks so much. Uh, Mike Del Judas, everybody. Uh, stick around because after the break, we will have a quick sketch. But after that, Mike will be playing in the studio an original song called Days of Old. You can't miss it. Stick around for more with Mike Del Judas in Princeton tonight. came from the library. I thought I was going to be running a little late. Oh, what were you doing over at the library? Huh, I actually, I tutor young, illiterate children over there. Oh, illiterate, you say? Yeah. Well, that actually reminds me of my brother. Um, he was illiterate until the age of nine. Oh. Yeah, and uh, I taught him everything he needed to know on one night. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. You must, uh, you must really love your brother. Um, do you have any other siblings? Um, just the one. Uh, but I, I love him very much. 
How about yourself? Fourteen, actually. Yeah, eight oh. brothers, six sisters. Wow. Oh, that must have been hell on your mother, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it would have been um, had she been there, but she actually was working most of the time, which oh. was a challenge in and of itself because she was blind. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear about that. Um, you know, that actually reminds me of my research, working on the intricacies of retinitis pigmentosa. Yeah, I actually, uh, I've been doing some, some research on the retina, but with regards to its cancer. Oh, wow, cancer. Yeah, cancer's one bastard, but you know, good, God bless your work, sir. But you know, I would've, I would've done that, but unfortunately I had another project on the side, the World Immunization Initiative. We're trying to do this thing where we get vaccinations all over the world. We're hoping to get all these vaccinations out by 2030. Uh, wow, yeah, I'm in favor of relief anywhere, whether it's disasters, violence, or disease. Yeah, I'm just trying to be a Good Samaritan like us all. Yeah, that actually, uh, speaking of Good Samaritan, that actually reminds me of the time that I was in a pound during a typhoon and I performed CPR on 300 puppies. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, that reminds me of the time when I uh, did the exact same thing, except uh, in a hospital with babies. Well, now that we're talking about babies, that reminds me of the time that I was in New Orleans following Hurricane Katrina and I midwived 3,000 babies. Oh yeah, well it must have been hard. It, was it hard. must have been real hard. Was real hard. Well, I was in sunny West Africa fighting the Ebola outbreak. Well, I ran a 401k to raise money for that outbreak oh. and I'm happy to know that it was in good hands. You, you ran 401 kilometers. I did in a business week, but yes, Oh yeah? Well, I had to carry my legless brother all the way up Mount Whitney just so I could show him our mother's lifeless corpse. You call that an accomplishment? I crash landed a 747 into my own house, saving hundreds, but eviscerating my entire family! Well, if you've only crash landed three 747s, then why are you even applying to this fine institution? If you think that's the only thing I've done, you've lost your mind! Ever heard of the Electoral College? Thomas Livingston the Third? Hi, Mr. Livingston. How's your father? Rich. <laughs> that's a twig. Welcome back to Princeton tonight, playing his original song, Days of Old. Please welcome again, Mike Del Judas. Talked a little more. Could we avoid this disaster? Can we get back to the days when we laughed, held each other? When it seemed so right just to call you my lover, who's to blame? When we're colder, there's a long way back to the day. If I was a better father, could I have done a little more? But in the end, there's nothing better than going back to before when we laugh, we cuddle. When you were first, and there weren't any others who's to blame. When we're Take me back to the days of old Can we get back to where we started? 
should we just throw it away? Maybe we could say we're really all to blame when we're fighting for another day. Seems so right just to call you my lover who's to blame when we're colder and to take me back to the days of old when we cuddle when you were first and there weren't any others who's to blame when we're older there's a long Thank you so much, Mike. That was Mike Del Judas performing his original song, Days of Old. You can catch him every month on tour with Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden or with his very own tribute band, Big Shot. That's all the time we have on Princeton tonight. But before you go, here are some good things with Paul Shoren. Hi, everybody. This is These Are Good Things with Paul Shoren. And this mug is empty, save for a little ceramic giraffe. That is a good thing. Another good thing, The Witch. It's this year's Babadook, but with possibly more staying power. It's a whole lot darker and a little bit scarier, but it is a masterpiece of highbrow frights. It's also easily the best horror film about a witch since The Blair Witch Project, considering that that film contains no witches, mostly just arguments about maps. However, to be fair, this witch does abstain from making folk art, so consider that when you decide which witch film you want to see. I'm still waiting, however, for Hermione to get her own witch origin story film, a la Maleficent, because film executives, if there's anything audiences love, it's when you ruin their favorite characters so you can afford that trip to Turks and Caicos. Another good thing was Kanye West's title release party for his album, The Life of Pablo. It was fantastic. People are calling it a celebration of ego and nothing more. People are calling it the most, most self-indulgent performance. For any other artist, that's generally a bad thing. But for Kanye West, that's a pretty good and consistent thing. Listen, his work thrives on ego. Let him have his cake and eat it too. It was a great show. It was a little bit disorganized, but a lot of fashion, a lot of beautiful music. And he seemed to have fun during it. So that's really what matters, isn't it? However, there are also some not good things. These are not good things. Kanye West also changed his album name so many times. The album seems to be great. The title and the changes it went through, not so much. This began with So Help Me God, then we went on to Swish, then we went on to Waves. Now Life of Pablo. Who cares? The concept of an artist stringing people along with just the album name, not even a full track, not even a track list, dangling them along just for the thrill of it. It sounds like a femme fatale from a film noir that's really, really bad. It's the dumbest game of cat and mouse imaginable and it needs to stop. No one else do this, please. Thank you. People who are mad about Deadpool, these are also not good things. Full disclosure, I haven't seen Deadpool yet, but for this not good thing, I don't need to. Some parents and kids around the country are outraged by the film's R rating, demanding that a PG-13 version be released. To the editors, producers, directors, etc. of Deadpool, please don't do this. The, your film is R rated. That's what it is. Little children, Adults, you can watch it soon. You don't need to see it now. If we're diluted so far down into a PG-13 version, would it even be the same movie? One that I hear is actually pretty good. 
Imagine if they did that with every R-rated classic. If you had The Godfather and made it PG-13, the market scene would have been awful and involved much more ketchup. This is not something to get up in arms about. Just go watch The Avengers for the umpteenth time. This has been These Are Good Things with Paul Shore, and until next time, I'll be sitting right here.